Hi, welcome back to my class. In this video, you will learn about electricity. Are you ready to learn? Let's go! When you hear the word electricity, what comes first into your mind? Very good! When you hear the word electricity, you will also hear the word energy because electricity is a form of energy. Electricity is a form of energy which you encounter in everyday life. You must be familiar with this energy since it is the energy required to operate appliances, gadgets, and machines. To understand electricity, we need to learn about electric charges and charging processes. Let's begin with electric charges. As we all know, all matters are made up of atoms. Atom is the smallest unit of an element. An atom is made up of subatomic particles called proton, neutron, and electron which play an important role in charging. Proton is positively charged found inside the nucleus. Neutron is neutral or no charge found inside the nucleus. Electron is negatively charged found outside the nucleus. Electron is highly mobile in the atom and moves around the nucleus. Since it is mobile, it can move from one atom, molecule, or material to another. Remember, most objects do not have an electric charge because there is a balance of electrons and protons in material that makes up the object. In some circumstances, the varying composition of different materials gives them different electrical properties, one of which is the ability of a material to lose or gain electrons when they come into contact with a different material through friction. Have you ever tried to extend your head near an open television? What did you observe? You can observe that some of your hair are extending towards the screen of your television. What you experience is what we call as static electricity. Static electricity is electric charge at rest. Looking back to our history, static electricity was discovered by Thales when he accidentally rubbed an amber to a piece of wool. He observed that the amber attracts small objects after it is rubbed on the wool. In this case, the amber becomes negatively charged, attracting other materials. Later on, William Gilbert found out that other matter or substance can be charged like the amber. It can be observed easily by rubbing a balloon onto your hair. When you rub the balloon on your hair for several times, you will observe that some of your hair is attracted towards the balloon. What happens between the balloon and your hair? The previously neutral material becomes charged due to rubbing. The hair loses electrons and transfer it to the balloon. The hair becomes positively charged. While the balloon gains electrons from the hair and becomes negatively charged. Since the two materials have different charges, they attract each other. How about two balloons rubbed together on your hair? What will happen if we put them together side by side? The balloons will repel each other because both balloons are negatively charged. This situation shows us the law of electric charges or electrostatic law, which states that objects or materials with opposite charges, positive or negative, attract 
while objects or materials with the same charges repel, just like the magnets. Don't forget the law of conservation of charge. Charges cannot be created nor destroyed but can be transferred from one material to another. The total charge in a system must remain constant. There are three types of charging processes. We have charging by friction, charging by conduction, and charging by induction. Charging by friction Rubbing two different materials against each other may cause the transfer of electrons from one material to another. Charging by conduction Conduction is the transfer of electrons from a charged object to another object by direct contact. Charging by induction The charging process where an object can be charged without actual contact to any other charged object. Keep in mind that the behavior of a charged material depends on its ability to allow charges to flow through it. A material that permits charges to flow freely within it is a good electrical conductor. Metals are usually good conductors of electricity. In contrast to conductors, insulators are materials that hinder the free flow of charges within it. Some examples of insulators are glass, porcelain, plastics, and rubber. And that ends our video for today. Thank you for watching. Until next time.